Welcome everybody to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. So as you remember, about three weeks before Christmas, I released a video uh, and it was called My Top 7 Reasons Why I Think You Should Buy the Woodland Scenics Grand Valley Layout Kit. And that video was really well received. There seems to be a lot of interest in the Grand Valley kit right now. Uh, it's winter time, people are stuck inside, they wanna get into railroading. Uh, so this is a great kit to start with. I've had a lot of questions, uh, a lot of comments. Uh, I try to answer them all, but uh, please understand there's been a lot of people sending me comments. So if I miss yours, I'm sorry, um, there's just been a lot. So. Uh, uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to focus, I'm going to continue to focus on the elements of the Grand Valley layout kit that I think will be interesting to people who are starting out or considering buying it or, you know, just, uh, curious about it. And, uh, in doing so, I want to answer some questions that were posed, uh, in the comments, if I can. Uh, so this video is going to be my top five things that I did to customize the Grand Valley layout kit when I built it. So there are uh, there are five things. Well, there are a lot of things that I customized, which is one of the reasons that it's a great kit to uh, build because you can customize it and you can modify it however you want. But uh, there were five pretty good major things that I did to modify it that I'm going to go over today. Okay, so one of the first things that I did, we'll call this number five, but one of the first things I did was I went on eBay and I bought some photo paper that had pictures of cut rock on it. That's just flat photos of cut rock that I glued on the inside of the tunnel walls and it really gives it a three-dimensional look. It, um, the reason I did it was for cab ride videos, and I'll show you up here uh, some cab ride where it really looks three-dimensional when these trains go into the tunnels. Now, I didn't line the entire tunnel wall with it, but just back about 12 or 14 inches uh, just to get a look of cut rock. I mean, doesn't that look like that's three dimensional and it's sticking out? It's but that's just a photo. It's just flat. So that's something you can do. There are a lot of different uh, textures, a lot of different types of cut stone. There are brick, uh, lots of stuff. So uh, kind of a neat idea. Look on eBay, find some photo paper like that, and before you close in your tunnels, think about gluing them, those on the tunnel walls. Okay, a lot of questions came up about track. Now, uh, some people were put off that the initial kit does not include the track. It's a separate pack that you have to buy, but you can use any track that you want. You don't have to use Atlas track. You can use other brands. You can use uh, Code 100. You can use Code 83. You can do whatever you want. You can buy the pieces, the track individually. If you want, you can use your old Tyco track from, you know, when you were a kid, if you have it. Um, you're just going to have to modify it a little bit with small little pieces that will help you fill out the pattern uh, so it makes sense and it fits the, the roadbed. Um, as soon as the train clears here, I'll show you. There are some small pieces that I put in here between here to make up that difference and the only way it's going to be different for everybody but the only way is to get all your track together and piece it together and try to uh, uh, make it work and center in the road beds now the way I modified my track was I installed on uh, two straight pieces nine inch straights I installed re-railers one right there and one right in front of the station, right here. And that's just, uh, was because I could, because those were straight pieces. And it's amazing how many times 
those will save the train from, you know, having a complete derailment. Uh, really, really nice uh, to have. Uh, those are the only two really straight areas in the whole kit other than right here. The rest inside the tunnels and everything, it's all curved. Uh, a little bit of straight here, but those are switches. So rather than right here, I decided to put it in front of the station because it looks like a level crossing and that would make it easier for people to get on and off of passenger trains. Some more straight here. So, I mean, you can put them anywhere you want, but uh, I think it's a good idea to add those. So number four, add re-railers. Okay, number three, what I did, instead of pouring hydrocol plaster, like I did on the roads here, for the parking areas, parking lots, that whole industrial area, I used eighth inch foam sheeting and I just cut it to the size that I wanted for the parking area. Same here, if you look back on when I made Molly's Diner here, this is just foam sheeting. Same, that whole area back there is just one big sheet of foam and I just cut it to the way I needed it and glued it down and then painted it. And it was so much easier than laying and pouring this hydrocol plaster. Now I did it for the roads like the kit uh, called for, but it was hard <laughs> and it's messy. But even for the town square area, this is just eighth inch foam and it's laid down and then I put 16th inch foam or quarter inch I mean uh, for the curbing to step up to be the sidewalk so that's all just layers of foam painted accordingly um, saves so much time and uh, <laughs> and effort and trouble so I recommend that highly um, so that's uh, number three make your residential parking areas and uh, town square out of foam sheets. And I'm gonna call this number two. I'm gonna call it the town square. It's, the, the kit is pretty vague about how this is designed. It gives you a sort of an overview, but it kind of comes out the way that you form your mountains with the newspaper or the newsprint and how you do it with the plaster cloth. Now I wish that I would not have done this big outcropping here with that. I wish I would have given myself more room for these buildings to be back a little ways. Same over there where that road goes up. Look how that slopes down so much. Uh, it really takes up a lot of real estate. So that uh, gave me some issues with how to design the town square. Other guys that I'll link to, uh, like Copter Dude and uh, Dave FR, they took a little more time with their downtown area and made it nice and square and big so they could do uh, a little bit more with it. I ended up making this little park to, uh, to be in the town square, uh, to be a little roundabout kind of thing, and I, I like it. Uh, you know, there's nothing that says I can't rip that out and totally redo this and do anything I want. But that was the way I modified it when I built this and it's the way it came out. And I'm pretty happy with it. So I would say number two is the way you design your downtown uh, little area. Take your time, lay it out real well and be cognizant of how thick and uh, wide you make these mountains here because it does impede on the town square. So uh, that was how I did it. And uh, I'm happy with it, but I could have been happier. The number one thing that I modified on this layout when I started it was on my bench. This is uh, four feet. It's four by eight. You can see I made my bench a little bit wider than just four feet. And then I had a shelf on here that was about six inches wide. Um, now, since I have modified that and I've got a board on here that's 10 inches wide. Um, so that makes this shelf out here. And then I've got an eight inch wide one here, which has become my yard. 
Now, this is expandable. I can go out further if I wanted, but we have to step through here. And uh, I wanted to be very cognizant of the room I took up in the basement. I can expand if I want to, um, but this is what I have so far. So I designed this shelf to be a little yard and it, I wanted to have a bypass so that if somebody was parked here in front of the station, I could have a little way for a train to go around. Now, it's not very big, mind it, but it is functional. <laughs> so what I did was here where the siding side of the layout was, this is the actual edge of the layout. I just cut this out, gouged it out, made it level and replaced that straight with a switch. And I did the same thing right here. And you can see I used ballast and some of it's actually cracking there and needs to be re-glued. But uh, I just put a switch in here and then came in here and then just went wild with another switch here, uh, switch here. And then that gave me the opportunity to make a yard. Uh, this is just cork board. I've got my engine house down at the end, a little auxiliary building there, um, some junk, you know, laying around on the track side. And then I've got a little control tower here, interlocking tower where, uh, you know, old fashioned, they used to throw levers that would throw the switches, but that's, uh, pretty much where the, the guys work in the yard. And then I even, uh, expanded on a video uh, where I added this piece because it, I had it stopping here. I added this piece with a little switch so that we could have a fueling station down here and uh, added this road in later. You can see I, I did the same thing, kind of cut that out, have a little road with a stop sign so guys can get in here. And uh, so that was the number one modification that I made to the layout. This was shortly after I got it built and, and functioning. I realized that I wanted to have some sort of a yard. It's, uh, you know, it's not a huge yard for doing a lot of switching, but it is functional and it gives me, most importantly, it gives me a place to park trains uh, when I'm not using them. Uh, for the most part, overnight and, you know, on weekends and stuff, if I'm not using the layout, I'll park the trains in the tunnels so they don't get dust on them. They're kind of out of the way. Nobody passing by will run into it, knock them off the track. Um, but it does give me a nice little area here to park some trains when I need to. So, All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Just a quick little uh, synopsis of some of the... Uh, modifications that I made when I built the kit. Of course, there's going to be f a lot more. Yes, I am planning to put some flashing crossings in here. Um, I would love to get some with little arms that come down, uh, but if it's just the cross jacks uh, with the lights flashing, that would be all right too. If you guys know of a good operating arm with flashing lights, uh, you know, for not too much money <laughs> let me know in comments uh i would really love to have a, a gate here an arm on both sides it's gonna be a little trickier over here uh i think just flashing lights here because uh i i could probably do an arm here and there but uh one of the trickiest places is the way i have this here where it's a a really sharp turn not very wide road uh no place to stop going this way uh, if you get trapped in between the, the tracks there, it's kind of uh, rough. But there, there could be an arm there. Uh, so if you guys know of uh, some good arms that aren't that expensive, let me know. Um, I, that's one of the projects I have planned. Some more projects are to continue lighting my buildings. I have a few of them. Three of them up here are lit. I have three to go. I'm sorry, four to go. I have street lights that I want to put in there. Uh, as most of you know from my past videos, it's a little tricky because this is elevated up off the layout. 
So you have to use long drill bits to get down through and under the table. Uh, so it's a little bit of a pain. Uh, I've been avoiding doing it for a while, but I want to get into that and uh, get those finished. Um, as you guys know, I did working traffic signals. I have videos on that. That's a really neat addition. Uh, traffic signals that work. That's pretty cool. So uh, crossing signals would really be nice uh, to go along with that. But uh, that's stuff that's coming up. Uh, of course, uh, you know, I, I also do things like weathering and uh, other types of videos. But uh, for now, uh, we're just going to keep focusing on the Grand Valley layout. And there are a lot of new people that either got it for Christmas or uh, are thinking about getting into it that have questions. So let me know in comments if you have questions. Other people answer the questions too. There are a lot of people that watch my channel that are experts and know a lot more than I do about this stuff. And uh, those guys will jump in and answer too. So feel free to ask questions. I'll get try to get to every one of them if I can. And uh, that's about it for this week. So thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next video.